write in our own stories. Woos! So Woos is a new Barbadian storytelling podcast that gives writers a platform to showcase their works, be it fictional, historical, or modern day truths. This was all inspired by Teddy Calderon and brought to you by the Intertune Project, Watts New TV, and Audio Lab Studios. Hi everyone, I'm your host Teddy Calderon and this first story was written by Danica Paris and narrated by Charmaine Blades. This story is titled Betsy Hurricane. Betsy, 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 wake up. It's time for school. I slowly open my eyes, preparing for the harsh sunlight to barge in like the police at six in the morning, unapologetically. Out comes a big yawn and a suck tooth. I'm coming, Mom. Lazily get into my feet and head into the yard to use the bathroom. I have my morning conversations with the cockroaches and the little mice running around the pit. The world begins to make sense again as I chat with my puppy, pretending to be Cinderella. Mom peers through the back door and yells, Don't stay out there all morning. Hastily, I whisper my goodbyes to my friends and go inside and slump down in the chair at the table as I await breakfast. This morning, the menu was oats. We had this little box that we could listen to music from, which played in the background while Mom paced through the house talking to herself as she gets stuff ready. Then out of nowhere, this strange, new and annoying sound like a car horn with a bad cough pierced my ears. What is that, dear? Mom yelled from her room. Oh, don't worry. That is just the signal to let us know that a hurricane came. She told me about it before, but this was my first time experiencing it for myself. What an exciting but petrifying time. I knew the next thing mom would say is to look through the window and tell her how outside looks. So before she did, I took it upon myself to investigate. I was really short, so I had to climb up onto the wooden chair so I could pull down the louvers to peep outside. The sun had just about finally woken up and gave its last yawn before the gray clothes stepped out in front to put on their dance show. I leapt from the chair, wide-eyed, with trembling lips, and gasped. Mummy, I think the storm here. I never knew the difference between a storm and a hurricane. As far as I knew, they were both bad news. Mom's bedroom door made that loud, creaky sound it frequently does. I giggled and waited for her to say, I really gotta get that WD-40 for that door. We both laughed. She came over to me, moved the curtain aside and said, Well, it's a good thing I went to the shop yesterday. Pulled my chin and walked away. I knew what it was time to do. Our house wasn't big, so checking to make sure everything was okay never took long. We stored boards under the cellar for times like these to nail over the windows so they don't move. I'd sit by mom's feet and hand her the nails. Some of the windows were missing boards so the rain would be able to creep in. So we had to get the big black plastic bags and tape them onto the windows. Last but not least, we put buckets to catch the water from the roof that drips. The clouds went from gray to black and I could no longer see the happy sun anymore. Just a gray cast outside, almost looking like dawn came quickly. Only the rich people had televisions. So we had nothing much to keep our company besides our little boombox and some games. I was a bit scared, but I wanted to be strong like mom, so I never showed it. She brought all my favorite games. We started with dominoes, then we would move on to snakes and ladders, or ludo, or even Chinese checkers. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. The wind was knocking on every window and door of the house like a madman trying to break in. She was screaming at us loudly to let her in. Jeanette was demanding and determined that if the rowdy banging on every door of the house wasn't enough, she poured buckets of water on us that sounded so uproariously. I covered my ears with both my hands and glanced at mom. She just sat there so calm and smiled. Let's look outside, she declared with a hearty voice. The only windows we didn't nail shut were the ones at the front of the house, so we were able to pull down the louvers to peer into Jeanette's shower. I slowly opened the window, and in came a few sprinkles of Jeanette's bath water to kiss my nose. Reflexively, I closed my eyes and giggled a bit. There were large puddles of water outside. Some of the trees had fallen, 
and the houses were dancing with the wind. The sight was interesting. I just stood there in awe as mom clutched onto me. Out of nowhere, the high winds noticed I was watching its painting, being created and rushed right at me to shut the window in my face. Pax! Uh-oh! Mom exclaimed as the whole house vibrated. We gotta go by Grandad. We lived in St. George. Grandpa has a farm and a more stable house than ours, so Mom was making sure we were safe. We got dressed in our armor to head out into the turmoil that was happening all around us. Raincoat, boots, an umbrella, and off we go. To get by Grandpa, we had to go through the gully because the flood was high on the paved roads and gushing through the streets. We took the back way, and the gully was not any better, if I'm being honest. Muddy waters up to Mom's stomach with me on her hips, with the clouds shooting at us. It was ridiculous. I held the umbrella over our heads and kept wiping her glasses so she could see. Mom kept saying, We soon did, but it felt like soon was so far away. I hugged Mom tightly and peered behind us, thinking to myself, it's a good thing we don't have quicksand in Little England. Patsy's house was having a serious fight with the wind. It was shaking and leaning. The roof was jumping up and down like a toddler seeing its dad coming in the distance. Oh my! I exclaimed with outstretched eyes. Mummy duck! I yelled. We both fell into the muddy stream. Mom lost her glasses and the umbrella ran away. Patsy's roof had come off and darted in our direction. Whoa! Let me hurry up, Mom says with a frazzled look on her face. Finally, we made it out of the gully. The rain was beating down and it was cold. The thunder was in a serious argument with its brother from the north, south, east, and west. Brug her down! The big ackee tree fell right in front of us. The lightning was coming after us now. Mom grabbed my hand and yanked me so hard it almost felt like she pulled it out the socket and we ran without stopping. The boots came off. The raincoat was torn up, and the little protruding branches smacked me in my face. She pressed the brakes so hard as she halted. I landed right in her back. We were there finally, or so we thought. She squinted, trying to see. But wait, Mummy, I ain't see Grandpa house. I uttered, confused. Well, loss. That's pearly tree in Grandpa yard. Mom said. I had to be the eyes because Mom was as blind as a bat. So I looked all around. Then I finally saw Grandpa's house. It was in Henderson's yard. All the houses had shifted position. What well, I never thought I would have seen the day, Mom said as she chuckled. The land had moved everything around. I just wanted to get inside. We had already been through enough. So I tugged Mom's arm and led the way. I knocked Grandpa's door so loudly, he answered by jokingly saying, You gonna be police when you get older? My face was bruised and as red as a tomato. So Grandpa told my mom to go put some water on to give me a nice warm bath and to wash me a Dettol soap whilst he finishes up the soup he was cooking. We both got cleaned up and I went to sit at Grandpa's table waiting for my chicken soup with dumplings and my favorite was always finding the pigtail. I was starting to feel better as Grandpa poured out the soup. It smelled so lovely, I couldn't wait to dig in. But the steam was so visible, Grandpa called me over to bandage up my face whilst it cooled. He sent Mom to look for the kerosene lamps I called lanterns that we would have to burn as night reached so we could have light. After the day we had, I ate and left Mom and Grandpa looking for the stuff needed to get us through the night. I went to bed falling asleep to the sounds of the rain and the winds on the window. <laughs>